<gasps> I just had the craziest dream. You will never believe it. I've got to write it down. I was just dreaming about a butterfly. Oh, my pencil's not working. There we go. A butterfly. And an elephant. I wonder how I could include those in an artwork. Dreams make very good artworks. There was a whole group of artists that liked to tap into dreams. They were called surrealists. Salvador Dali was a very important artist during this surrealism movement. They liked to make artwork about their dreams. Sometimes they also made artwork about stories that they read that were very similar to dreams, such as Alice in Wonderland. You can see in these pictures, pictures of Alice, the butterfly, the caterpillar, the house, and lots of clocks. Here is an artwork by another artist named Chris Gall who makes very fantastical images. Just look at the fish coming out of the mailbox. He's also an author of picture books. I always like to look at a picture when I'm doing a drawing. So I found a picture of a butterfly, outer space, and an elephant. Here is my drawing. Make sure you always start by drawing lightly. You can add people by using simple ovals for legs and arms and the body, and even an oval for the head. Start to work on adding details, slowly building up your layers of pencil. If you work lightly, you can always erase. I then created a horizon line, and I started to place my elephants tiny on the horizon line. I wanted them to appear far away. I made three elephants together. Then I wanted to put one elephant in the foreground for some added depth, and I wanted to show some overlapping. I started to plan out my outer space background. Pick which color crayons you would like to use. I'd like to do this artwork as a wax resist. So I added white crayon and yellow crayon to be different stars. Then I will paint over it. Here my drawing is sped up so that you can see me draw all the different areas that I put into the outer space background. To make my galaxy seem super magical, so I included lots of different colors stars, the spiral galaxy with purple, and a green nebula. I outlined pretty much everything in the drawing, including the flowers at the bottom, the girl's outfit, and I added black around the butterfly. So I decided with this artwork, I wanted to do a little bit of wax resist. So that's why I colored a lot of areas with crayons, but I didn't color everything with crayons. I've got my watercolors here. And really, I just want to use watercolor for the background because I feel like it takes a lot of time to really fill in a whole area with either crayon or marker or colored pencil. And my picture is in outer space because I was picturing this butterfly riding a butterfly through outer space. Sounds very fun to me right now. Love to ride a butterfly in outer space. But I want to show you a neat trick that you can do if you do not have any watercolors. You can always take some dried out markers and put them into some water. Now I'm going to put a little less water here because you don't need a lot when you're using watercolor. And I'm going to dip my blue marker in there. These markers are dried out. They're not that good to use anymore. But there's enough ink in them. And you can probably start seeing that purple is starting to come right out of the ink. So it, that water will soak every last drop of ink out. I've got a purple, a black, and a blue. And I might use that to paint the sky. 
So when you're doing watercolor with wax resist, you got that crayon on there. And remember, the reason it's good is the wax and water will not mix. They will resist. So I'm gonna start by painting some of this ground area. I want it to be like a really rich green. So I'm gonna wet my green paint here. I'm gonna put a couple drops of water in my green paint. I got a green here. And I think this is a dark green also. Sometimes it's good to use a couple different ones or you can use, you can mix your colors even. I'm gonna put one there. I think that's a blue, but we'll see. It doesn't hurt to have a little blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint with this green. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna be too afraid to get close to the drawing because that's where I did wax and I can get kind of close when not going over those flowers because I'm gonna paint those flowers with some orange paint later. You'll wanna make sure that you have a paper towel nearby so you can dry your brush after you've cleaned it or if it's too wet. Now you could really just let these markers sit in here like for two days even to really get a vivid color. But I wanna get started. So, and I've got some purple here. The purple is really light. I could also use the marker. And some of that ink will still be coming out of the marker. And look at my wax resist. It's not gonna stick um, to the paper. No, this, there's not much ink in the black. The black looks like maybe it's really done for. And I kind of want the bottom of the paper, there comes the black, a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna start with working at the bottom with this purple and this black. And because I did crayon on the border, the color should not stick together too much. Look at that wax resist. I've never tried this with the marker. I mean, I've tried um, coloring with the marker, but not on top of the crayon when it's wet like that. And it works out pretty good. I can even take my brush and then I can blend that color more. So it's kind of like using um, watercolor pencils. If you've ever used watercolor pencils, they're fun. So like these stars that I did in crayon, I can just go right on top of. See that pop right back out, this yellow, watch it. It's gonna pop right back out when I go on top of it. Look at that. So I'm gonna have this purpley sky in my picture. I really wanna bring this purple over this way some. So just do that with my brush, keep working, and go over top of things. I don't want to go over top of the big things, but these little things, like the little stars, I can go right on top of and keep working. So I think my crafts might be dry enough that I can go in and paint my orange flowers. First, I gotta make sure I wash off my brush really good. So I'm gonna swirl it in the water and then dry it just a little. I don't really want a dry brush, but I wanna make sure there's no color in there because I want these orange flowers to be super bright and pop. I really love the way it looks when I take this black paint across the area where I tried to make white spots. And then the white spots just magically appear. Oops, I got some black into my orange. Oh well, no big deal. No worries. And then I still have white spots all over my butterfly. 
in order to try and make a color really light with watercolor, you can wet the spot first. So if I want to do the face here, but I don't want it to look too dark, I wet the face and then let that color spread. And you can also dab it with your paper towel just a little bit if it seemed like too much. And there we go, nice base color. Now I'm gonna use my Sharpie to add a little bit of detail into the person and just to make them stand out and pop a little bit more from the background. I wanna outline my person. You do whatever works for your drawing and artwork. But I noticed I couldn't see the arm here anymore so I wanted to make sure I could see that. I'm going to draw the face on here with pencil because I don't want it to be too dark. Just want it to show up a little bit. I cannot wait to see where you will take your magical journey to. How are you going to get there? Are you going to take a boat, a submarine, an animal that flies? Anything is possible in your fantastical voyage.